Thank you for joining us for this September 2022 VIP workshop, Charge for Your Expertise, Not by the Hour. My name is Lee Reams. I am the founder and CEO of CaddyWorks. And today's topic, I think, has um, so many benefits. I would hope that many of you will listen and at least try or iterate some of the concepts that we're teaching today. But more importantly, I think this is a way to look at your existing client base, new clients, and experiment with ways to drive more revenue. You know, be paid for your expertise, the value you provide versus your time. So we're going to talk a lot of those concepts. And today's agenda, we're going to have an introduction. Uh, the biggest part, changing your mindset, understanding your value. What is value-based pricing? And, all, and we're going to talk about packaging as well. How to become an expert, how to price like an expert, and why you should use pricing packages. We're going to give you three different examples of types of packages, so which will kind of give, guide you when you decide to uh, try this out for yourself, and then how to sell yourself effectively, and then we'll have a short conclusion. About this webinar, approximately 40 to 50 minutes long. I think there's 54 slides or so. There's no CPE credit. This workshop is designed for US-based small tax and accounting practices. However, any other business or practice may benefit. So let's get into it, the introduction. Um, time is obviously a limited resource. Uh, and more importantly, there is a ceiling to the amount of profit you can make if you exchange your time for money. Time is the most precious commodity we have. So therefore learning to charge for your expertise rather than your time is essential to success. So we're gonna give you two uh, main takeaways from this presentation. Don't charge by the hour, charge by the years. This is a metaphor um, that actually works for you know Van Gogh or any artist, right? You can kind of get an idea of how that works and then charge for knowing how to solve the problem. So these are two main points to think about anytime you're putting together any proposal for a new client or an existing client or testing out some different packaging um, offers. So in this workshop, we will teach you how. <clears throat> so let's start off our first section, creating and selling expertise. And this gets into the mindset. I know accountants are very set in their ways. A lot of time it's, you know, do it the way we did it last year. Um, change and, and experimenting is kind of, you know, risky endeavors, right? So, you know, we say, ask yourself, are your clients paying for your costs or the actual value that you're providing? So for those results that you're providing because of your advice. Um, the answer to me may seem obvious, but it doesn't stop tax and accounting industry as a whole from per or perpetuating a model that serves neither the interests of tax and accounting professionals nor your clients. And I'm speaking specifically to those pros. We heard it a lot this year. They were just overwhelmed with the amount of work they were doing. You know, they're they're struggling to get it all done. They barely have any time, you know, for a regular life, their family, et cetera. So, um, you know, and this is a problem. I'm hoping that, you know, utilizing or rethinking the way you run your practice hopefully will um, change that for many of you. So tax and accounting firms are often on the defensive. You know, they're basically using old pricing models. And this is 2022. You know, a lot has changed, the pandemic and digitization of a lot of processes, the way your role has changed because of technology from being tasker versus more consultative advisory. Um, you know, the, you end up where if you're still doing things the way you used to, you're negotiating hourly rates and costs versus selling your value to the relationship and that better financial outcome for your client. So think of it this way, providing thoughtful advice to a business owner may take a lot less time and effort for you than preparing their complex tax return. However, your expertise and advice may save them thousands in the future. And this is where we're starting to talk about, you know, where, how do you put a dollar volume on that? How do you put a number? You know, it's, it, you know, not everyone could be a, a tax and accounting pro. Not everyone could be a CPA. Not everyone has gone through that education or has that brain that works that way, right? So, you know, your 15 minutes of advice might be worth thousands more than that one hour long tax return that any pro could have prepared. And what we're trying to get you to think about is let's start monetizing that, right? So if you charge a flat rate for all of your time, you'll be making a fraction of the profit for transactions that actually could have been worth much more. So as a tax and accounting professional, you are selling more than your time. You are selling expertise. You know, it took you years and intellect to master your craft. You know, you didn't come out of college and you were instantly able to, you know, uh, consult with a client on uh, business entity selection, for example. It took you years to kind of figure out what is the best entity? What is the best way to do this? There's years of experience working with other clients to find out what worked well for them, what didn't, 
what are the questions you need to ask before you get into an engagement, right? So it take, took you literally years to master your craft. You are um, not a trusted advisor. You are the most trusted advisor based on surveys. You are not an employee. Um, you know, you're working on a kind of on-demand advice. So, uh, you know, if someone needs some expertise, they may not have that in staff, right? So they're looking for an outsider to provide that, in, uh, that information. They're going to be willing to pay a premium for it. So if someone, you know, I'm just going to throw out, if someone's making $50 an hour, if they were a staff employee, but they go to an on-demand type of arrangement, you know, they're going to pay double that, 100, 150, 200, whatever. So that's kind of the, the general idea. You have work outside of everyday work that is not accounted for in your hourly rate. So think about this, your continuing education, your college education, um, seminars that you've gone to, networking events that you go to, uh, different boards that you might be on LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, technical support forums like the County Works Pro Forum. Those are all areas where you're learning. You're constantly learning, right? You're constantly getting better. That is, you know, that is not effectively put into an hourly rate, okay? So you also may be a subject expert which makes your advice even more valuable. This is where our niching down, focusing on a specific area of your practice becomes invaluable. You become the perceived thought leader, the perceived expert. Uh, it is much easier to demand a premium price over a generalist um, when you have that type of uh, expertise. So think about the value you bring to your clients. So value-based pricing defined is a methodology of setting prices primarily based on a consumer's perceived value of the product or service in question. And we're going to talk a lot about how you can get that perceived value up in your mind of your consumers based on different marketing, um, different thought leadership techniques. So today, consumers are not buying your time. They are buying experiences, your expertise, the results. And the outcomes, and I'll I'll just go to you know any sort of, and this is a, a experience that all of us have had. Uh, we call in a plumber or a refrigerator repairman, right? So if you were looking at purely the hours they spent um, in the house, and then versus what they charge for that outcome, a locksmith, uh, you you can you name it, you'd be going, oh my god, I cannot believe I just spent you know two hundred dollars for that fifteen minutes it took them to to fix my lock. The reality is consumers know I couldn't do it. I couldn't look on YouTube to figure out how to fix my lock. I had to hire someone who has the expertise to do it. And you know that, that value in the price is not just the quote unquote 15 minutes it took them, right? Um, so you know consumers are looking for an expert, someone who knows how to solve their exact problem. And I want you to start thinking about this as your mindset, right? So selling yourself as an expert allows you to price your value. This is important because if you're not using value pricing in your practice, you are limiting your earning potential and you are trading a limited amount of time for profit. So, you know, there's only so many hours in a week. There's just so many hours that you can physically work and bill. And that's your ceiling. You know, what is my hourly rate times 40, 60, 80? If I'm doing 100 hours, that's crazy. But there's my ceiling. If you're charging by value and you're able to get much more throughput done, and charge more for those services, you could work 40 hours and make what your hourly rate was in two or 300 hours also. Um, and you can also make this into a, uh, a system, a process where you can repeat it, it over and over again, and you can scale it because it is repeatable. So we're gonna talk a lot about that as we continue. So you may be clouding your client's judgment and scaring away potential customers. Hourly rates can be a psychological hurdle for clients. And think about any experience you've had working with an attorney, you know, you're not, maybe you're not your normal self. Hey, what's going on? How's the family? You know, what are you into? Let's talk sports or whatever. You know, you're literally sitting there going, how can I get off this phone call as quickly as possible when the $850 an hour, you know, I'm just talking about my tax attorney. So that would be a good example. You, you really want to, you know, rush through the calls. And what happens is you may not get all the advice or ask all the questions that you should purely because that is the relationship and how we work and how we trade our time together. So value-based pricing essentially means you set a price for your work that's based on how much value you provide to the client. So if I'm working with, a, let's say, a commercial real estate um, broker, and I am able to save them, let's say they're highly compensated, they're making $500,000 or more a year, and through deferred comp plans, the entity that we've uh, set up for them, 
um, you know, looking at their investment, doing any sort of tax planning, you're able to save fifty to one hundred thousand dollars. Do you think you should charge them for twenty dollars an hour? I mean, 20, 20 hours, whatever your hourly rate, or should you have a quarterly plan that's twenty five hundred dollars a quarter? So ten thousand dollars a year, you saved them fifty or a hundred. Do you think that person would pay you ten thousand dollars to get forty or ninety thousand dollars more in income? Absolutely, that's the value, right? So this doesn't include my hours work, just deliverables provided and what those items are worth in the opinion of your client. And trust me, those commercial real estate brokers value every single dollar. So value-based pricing makes it easier for clients to budget. There's more transparency, correct? So it's not a bottomless pit where each month, I don't know what the bill is going to look like. Um, allows tax and accounting practices to systemize their work this is what I was meaning by processes. So you can become more efficient while protecting the amount you charge per project. It also removes time from the conversation, allowing clients and advisors to explore options within a set scope while eliminating time from the conversation. So I know that there is no one size fits all. So there, I do have some clients who are doing things by the hour. Um, the consumer requests it, right? This is the way I want to do business. So if you want to work with me, this is what it is. So you could do a hybrid where you create packages, sell packages, and also do um, selling by the hour. One recommendation is start selling blocks of your time. It, one, you get paid up front and it counts down the amount of hours versus you chasing the time and chasing the invoices and right, getting paid later. Um, so I just threw, threw this out as a slide just to counter you know, another option here. This is something we're adding into our payments tool. Uh, for our 3.0 platform. So it makes it really easy to set a, you know, here's a 10 hour package. You subscribe to it through <clears throat> our uh, payments proposal tool, and then it automatically will track your hours and then bill the, the client. It counts down the hours as it goes, and then it'd be time to renew another package or another set of 10 hours or so. Uh, so testing out a mix of both value-based and hourly pricing is might be a good fit for you. So the psychology of pricing. Uh, remember, an hourly rate may be a psychological herder, hurdle. I gave that example, but assume a client comes to you with a complex tax return in a niche that you are an expert in. So meaning you're going to be able to do this return fairly quickly because you've done it over and over again. Some of the generalists might take three, five, six hours, whatever it is. But let's say the client thinks, yeah, it's probably a three-hour project just based on whatever you know number they came up with. And for them, the reasonable amount is $100 an hour. Uh, since you're an expert, you know it will take you less time. So you know, there's two different approaches here. You can state the return will cost $300 to produce, right? Direct. You're not talking about hourly rates or the tell the client it will take you an hour and cost them $300. And then they're like, wait a second, I only wanted to pay $100 an hour. You know, that's $300 an hour. So I think you can understand kind of the, the human side of this as well. So become an expert. Think, wouldn't you hire an expert when you need expertise. That is when you don't know how to do something or want something done better than what you can do. Okay. So this is for um, any DIY, DIY project when you having it, you know, again, I'll just go to the car. Um, I'm going to bring it to a car dealer versus going to Pepe Ways and trying to figure out how to do it on my own. A lot of times what's great about the internet and the modern age and on-demand services is things like virtual CFOs. I don't have to hire it's three hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand dollars CFO. I can hire a experienced CPA firm or an enrolled agent to be my virtual CFO at a fraction of those costs and get really high level advice um, on demand. Right. So if you want to improve, grow, solve, or invest in something, you hire an expert. So somebody that knows their craft inside and out, and that's what you need to communicate to your clients that you are the expert, You don't. the client doesn't have this expertise. They don't wanna make mistakes that get them in trouble with the IRS, um, make mistakes on payroll. They wanna have better financial outcomes. They, maybe they don't know how to budget. Maybe they don't understand cash flow, how to improve cash flow. You as an expert can add that expertise. So luckily for you, becoming an expert is not as difficult as it sounds. Many of you already are, right? You just don't communicate it well yet. So you just have to figure out what your time, money and effort spent over time have uniquely positioned you to do well and how to articulate this value to those that need it to up their game. This is when we talk, start talking about your narrative, the way your website speaks to the pain points. This is also 
you know, kind of the whole story about niching down and becoming an expert in a specific service or category. So remember, expertise as a service or expertise on demand is the future of work. You see this all over the place. You know, people, I'll give an example. Copywriters that used to work at ad agencies, now they're all independent. And guess what? The good ones are turning away work. They have more work that they can do, handle. Um, many of them got a, have gotten into packages as well. So you sign up and you spend $10,000 a month or $5,000 a month for access to this expert. And you know why I'd be willing to spend that money is because I know the quality of the work from that expert is going to drive a return on my investment. That if I can nail this pitch, if I can nail this narrative, I'm basically investing in my future versus trying to DIY using some you know crazy AI copywriting tool or hiring an inferior person, right? So your power lies in your ability to combine your skills in a way that is unique to you. So the price of a product or service can easily be adjusted to your market needs, which gives you freedom. So understand the strengths and values you can bring to others. So look into yourself. You know, what is the experience you have? Is there a certain client base that you work with a lot? You know, you're dealing with a lot of law enforcement. Um, if you're advising and consulting a lot of restaurant owners, um, you know, let's think about that. Okay, well, I am an expert in helping ex in restaurants set themselves up, set up their control, set up their billing systems and how, you know, using toast or whatever they're doing. But basically now, if I can become the expert in restaurant accounting or virtual CFO, more and more restaurants will refer me, more and more restaurants will seek me out, which is more important. And therefore you can start charging a premium price. So build your expertise and your authority, become a thought leader. We've talked a lot about blogging, podcasting, being on social media. Um, there's two reasons to do this. One is the purely the Google benefit of the Google algorithm seeing you as a trusted authority figure. That's part of their um, algorithm and how they rank brands. You know, who's more trustworthy? If you're active blogger, if you're uh, an active podcaster, there's, you know, if you have a ton of five-star reviews, those are good indicators um, to Google that this is an expert, this is an influencer, this is someone we should rank higher, okay? The other thing that people do is, okay, now let's say I am known. Let's say newspapers are searching me out. I'm getting quoted. I'm in CNBC for articles. I'm, I'm becoming the expert. Um, but then they don't pr promote their expertise as a service. They're still a generalist, for example. And they haven't figured out now, how can I price this and package this that I can make more money? Okay. So you need to define your value. What is it about your expertise that makes it more valuable than your hours spent? Okay. And then I always say, think perceived value and perceived value is in your consumer's point of, uh, of mind. So what have they done before they contact you? What have they read about you? What did it say on your website? What reviews did you have? Case studies. How did you show how a different client in their same shoes had, you know, this was their problem and this is what you did and these are the results. That is how you build up a expertise and more important, the perceived value when they decide to choose to work with you. So until clients see proven measured results, they don't really trust that you know how to save or make them money. So think about this. If you go to a website and you know, I see this often with our client base, I'll have a, uh, a professional and they'll throw a ton of designations and they talk about all these things they've done, but they don't even necessarily um, talk to any of the pain points um, of the client. And basically you're asking them to make a decision to hire you and to trust you off the bat um, that you're gonna save them money based on what? They don't know, right? So what you need to do is pre-sell your prospect. And, and what I'm saying is they may not know what all these designations mean. <laughs> um, so when you pre-sell your prospect, this is what you're doing. You're using things like reviews on third-party websites, your Google profile. You want a ton of fresh five-star reviews. Your clients do the selling better than you ever can. Any marketing, you know, any copywriter, um, a lot of times what we'll do is actually look at reviews and kind of create talking points um, in copy um, headlines, et cetera, based on what clients are saying. Because again, they have a different point of view than you do of their problems, right? So reviews and case studies help communicate your value. You want to become a thought leader by informing your clients and prospects with the latest tips, life events, news, you know, frequent blogging and social media posting. Obviously, we do this for you on CountyWorks Pro. All our VIP clients now have access to 
be quoted in our news articles. We're getting more and more syndication of those articles. We're being seen by literally hundreds of thousands of probably millions of people now um, in those articles. Now, think about that as a citation to Google. If your brand, your name was in a news article that we had that is gets 50,000 views, that is huge plus for your SEO side. It's going to make you rank better and more importantly, build you as the expert. More eyeballs are going to see you. You're going to become the expert in whatever field that is. So have the confidence to charge what you think is right and what your client can perceive as worth it. And then I, I said this before, but use real world values. I mean, examples, not values. You Use real world examples. And like what I meant is with client A, we did X and we had this result, right? So that is kind of what I'm saying. It's kind of a case study like thing, but if you can articulate it, tell stories, narratives, it's easier for a consumer to see the value and more importantly, think of you, see you as the expert. The goal here is if you pre-sell them properly, they're gonna be ready to buy. And if you're doing package pricing, it is transparent. They may even buy directly from your website without even talking to you. And that's the beauty of this. So remember, time is your greatest asset. Automate everything you can. Um, the cost of labor it continues to skyrocket. Uh, technology, digital technology, things that we're doing with CountyWorks Pro platform can save you literally tons of money. You know, automate a lot of things. So outsource as well where you can. Um, you don't need to have full time staff for a lot of these features. So we just we pulled in the Chris Decker method and said, you know, make a list of three areas: what you hate doing, what you shouldn't be doing what you cannot do. You know, I just put it here an example of legal work. But basically, there's other experts all over the place that you could create basically virtual teams to address your client needs. So start thinking about that. You can still provide an incredible service by working and partnering with a couple other experts um, and make that part of your package. So before you get out there and sell, it's a good idea to, to automate as many client touch points as you can. So our goal and mission with 3.0, our new platform, um, is to do that. So we have the whole get found side. So what you know, how do we um, make the different client touch points the first ones they see you? You know, so when they're not aware, or they're aware maybe they have a problem. They find your blog article. Um, then they go into the intent stage. We help you then with a discovery call through a video meeting. Um, at that point now, oh, they're willing to buy. So we have pricing, transparent pricing on your website. We have our new proposals and payments tool where you can push out a, a customized quote or a standard quote to a client that they can literally review it, accept it, sign your engagement letter digitally and put payment in, in five minutes, right? And these are ways that you can automate a lot of the process you might've been spending hours a week on. Um, and you can make it system-wise. So you can set up inventory. I just have an example here of the payments tool. We have a, we have a, basically an inventory. So you could create, hey, here's the base level bookkeeping. Here's the deluxe. Here's the essential. And then have an inventory. And then you can create uh, custom proposals around it very quickly. <clears throat> so CountyWorks Pro recently launched our specific tool. This is our payments tool that I'm talking about. So if you have not yet talked to someone about upgrading or migrating, uh, definitely reach out to our staff uh, at any point um, at kennerwishpro.com. So just here, a real quick example. Here's an example of our proposal tools. Left side is here's review the proposal. Second one is an engagement letter. Third one is checkout. And that's how quickly it is. One, two, three, you've taken a uh, client now through the sales process, made it very transparent. What am I getting? What's in the proposal? All that kind of stuff. So it's really slick and built into your client hub, which makes it really nice. So automating processes not only saves you and your client time, but allows you for better insight and transparency. Transparency, I think it's a huge deal in the buying process. Um, and this will help you drive more revenue from clients and prospects. It will also help you boost your perceived value and expertise in the eyes of your clients. So now we're going to get into the, the guts of this, I guess. So price like an expert. <clears throat> so with any big decision, there is inherent risk. So I always say take the friction out of the buying process. Um, and that's the great thing about the internet and instant response is you can test new pricing models on the fly and iterate as needed. So you could create maybe three or four tests and maybe break your client base into, let's say you had 350 clients, you divide them into four different groups and you could test small groups of 10 to start just to see what happens and start looking at the feedback. You know, is there one campaign or one pricing model that was more receptive than others? 
look at that. Was there a good return on your investment? If yes, then that's the one you scale. So the first thing, set your price. Your prices should reflect the true value of your offerings and set you apart from your competitors. We do not want you selling commodity products. We don't want you to be tax preparers. We want you to be tax planners. We don't want you getting $500 a year for a tax return. We want you getting five dollars or $10,000 for tax planning. It might narrow the amount of clients you work with, but that is kind of the way to do this. Another thought process is X number of your clients will select where what category they want to be in. You could still run both practices. Out of your 350 clients, maybe 250 stay as tax prep clients. Great. Now you're only doing exclusively 250 tax returns, but you have 100 clients that just went from $500 to $5,000 a year. You could do the math. Um, so it's really important to really think this through. So the more unique aspects that make consumers choose you over others, this is why specializing is so important. Um, my biggest gripe with the tax and accounting industry is everyone tries to be generalists. You have a small subset who now gets what specializing is all about. These niche players, you know, let's just say it's expat taxes, for example, um, they are able to scale. They're able to get um, a premium for their pricing. They're able to be that thought leader. They're going to dominate page one of, of Google. And whether or not they have any more skill set than you is debatable. I would say they do purely because they see the same type of pro problems over and over again. And guess what? It takes them less time to work with that client and solve that problem, which means the ability to make more money. Okay. Um, so uh, one thing here, uh, when you are negotiating a deal and a client wants, let's say that's $1,000 a month and they only want to pay $750, um, don't do that. Uh, if your client wants to pay less, offer less. So instead of having what was ever in that $1,000 package, they want to pay $750, take a couple things off. Or the alternative is maybe add some value for the same price, but make sure you don't back off that price. Um, so those are really important things. I think that comes into the confidence when you're in the negotiation to really think about. Get your staff on board. I can't tell you how important this is. Every single touch point. So whether it be your digital touch points, your social media, your landing pages, your staff, your receptionist, your lobby, your email signatures, get everyone on board to understand what you're trying to do and make sure those touch points are all immaculate, that they're great. They're the great client experiences and make sure you communicate your value and benefits at all these touch points. Um, a lot of times I have an example of a, uh, a person that I know that had switched CPAs. They went to their new CPA. Uh, she had, I think, three different bad experiences with the receptionist. Loved the CPA. Uh, she reported it to the CPA and said, you know, hey, I, you know, you got a problem here. And the CPA replied, you know, I've heard that before. But the question is then, okay, then why didn't you at least address it with the receptionist to try to get them to correct themselves? Or then if they don't correct themselves, replace that person, right? Um, but that's what I mean by getting everyone on board because you can have one weak link and it could hurt the entire, the entire uh, engagement. Change the way you work. Embrace digital workflows. We did a survey six months ago, and I think 57% of you are still doing completely paper-based uh, workflows. Um, you can make packages with checklists that are predefined and that are repeatable for every engagement. So we're working on a workflow tool that basically will take you from your proposal. And let's say proposal A, let's say it's a virtual CFO services, your premium package. And we're going to tie in what is that package include. We're then going to tie in an intake form that after someone buys or subscribes to that package, it kicks off an intake form that would then collect the information you need to get started, which then you can tie into um, a workflow as well. So this could have your checklist, what needs to be done. These could be Kanban style um, boards where you can have your staff work on them. You can have teammate, teammates work on them. But basically, you can digitize and, and make each process um, coordinated so that, you know, once you're done, once a client accepts a proposal, signs the engagement letter, it then kicks off an, an intake form. Once that intake form comes back in, it kicks off a workflow. Um, you know, let's say that's your virtual CFO premium workflow has eight boards and this is these are the things in there and these are the checklists. So what this does is you can sign up client after client after client for the same package and it's repeatable. So not every single client is custom. You gotta go back, what am I doing for this client? Um, so it's, it's, it's scalable if you're following me. And that's the big takeaway here. 
utilize technology, transitioning into a modern pricing model while relying on an old paper-based process will devalue your offering. I think you'll end up spending a lot of time to get things done. You will not be efficient. So make sure everything is running smoothly by nailing your internal processes. Example, we've talked about this, a payment and engagement letter automation tool, um, online scheduling, using video meetings. I could go on and on. Establish client expectations. This is what's beautiful about using a package or a value-based pricing system. You can communicate exactly what clients are paying upfront for. Um, there's no, oh, wait a second. I thought you were doing X. When it's an hourly, it's kind of ambiguous, right? When it's set up in a package that predefines, you get two hours a month with me. You get this, you get that, you get this, right? It's very clear and it's transparent. And I think having the established creates a better client relationship and has fewer uh, disputes. Iterate and test. So you might find transitioning from a traditional tax prep model to a tax planning package ultimately changes your work-life balance. That's the key here. So perhaps you can cut down on the number of clients while improving your revenue, your income. So do not be afraid to test new pricing models with existing clients or new prospects. Um, the worst they can say is no or push back. Um, and if one clicks, more importantly, if you're iterating, you will get one to click, you know, work on then to work on scaling it at that point. So how to use pricing packages? And this is, again, more of the, um, the important takeaway. So create a clean, clear product out of your service and make the intangible, well, tangible. So develop based on the level of service. So meaning uh, package A could have one hour. Package B could have five hours. Package three could have 10 hours. I'm just giving examples right now of uh, or like, um, and that's just part of the the, the package, right? So, um, you know, this is a way that it makes it much easier for you to define what they're getting, okay? So it's all about optimizing your offerings and the specific services you excel at to be as efficient and valuable as possible. So show prospects the results they will get from working with you for an exact price. So why utilize package pricing? Use packages to define and sell your expertise. More importantly, use packages to scale and use packages to create more free time. So your pricing package should be easy to create. Don't make it so complex that it's hard to understand. You, know, you need to be a lawyer to figure it out. Uh, you wanna make it easier to sell. I want it to be, so if I go through my proposal, the value is screaming at the client, okay? And this also makes this easier to deliver, okay? So when you create your package that not only takes your client needs into consideration, but takes your experience and expertise into account, you'll find that it becomes so much easier to sell and deliver the package. So do what you're good at. In order to get an idea how you'll build out your packages, you will need to consider th these factors. So first one is obvious to me, understand your clients. Um, a lot of times I think people don't. And they also are doing the generalist mode. So, you know, they think of all small businesses, but the reality is your medical practice is completely different than a restaurant. They have different needs. They have different um, issues. They have different threats. Uh, they have different risk controls. There's a lot of things there. So you need to speak to your clients and prospects and understand what their pain points are and where the openings are. So uh, this will lead to a better understanding of what they need help with. And this will help you when you're creating the different platforms uh, and packages. And what you can do is if you do it correctly, the consumer will look at the, let's say you have three packages. And if you define that each package, so package A is your starter, your base. Package B, you've added even more value, a higher monthly price. Package three, even more value. And if you can differentiate it enough, it's gonna help you do more upselling. So, you know, and if you price it correctly, you might end up getting clients going to the higher end packages out of the beginning. There's always the ability to upsell and cross sell later. Analyze your business. So look at your practice, reflect on past projects with clients, what worked, what didn't. Again, what did you enjoy? What do you want to keep? Uh, your view, your uh, sales to determine what services to keep and what services to ditch. Research your competitors. So know what others are doing. You don't want to copy them. That's the, what accountants do all the time. Well, let's just do what this, this site did. And then you end up with hundreds of thousands of the exact same site. There's no differentiation. Those firms are all then competing on price. They are a commodity. Um, and that is a problem. So if you research, at least you'll be able to see where are the openings. 
what can I do better than th that's out there right now? How can I differentiate myself? And more importantly, how can I create higher price packages versus ones with lower prices? So after identifying what is, is that you should create and why you're the best person to create it, right? You can utilize these three approaches to build out your package. You can go either narrow, wide, or deep. Uh, so let's give you some examples here. So what I say narrow, um, and the reason you can go narrow, you can start with just one element of a service you might be providing now. I put here bill pay. So we're just going to do bill pay. That's all we're doing. That's in our package. And what it is, is a great starter. It's a great way to start a relationship with a business. There's less risk. And maybe it's a service they're not getting right now, or maybe they are doing their own accounting. But when it comes to paying their bills, it's like, oh my God, this is a huge pain. So this is a great way to create a starter package around this particular thing. And then easily, as you build trust with them, be able to upgrade them into bigger virtual CFO type services. Okay. So these are like, you know, think of it as, as like a tester testing the waters, a small package, and there's less risk for both you and the consumer um, to jump on them. So that's what narrow is. Wide is you focus on one piece of the tax or financial puzzle and combined services create a new package. So I gave an example here. Let's say you're creating a tax planning package. And when I say why, you can have all these different elements in the tax planning package. So it includes a 60 minute strategy session. It includes income tax planning analysis through your software. It includes now we're gonna look at your estate tax planning. Um, you know, Is your estate set up correctly? Are you using tax uh, minimization strategies here? Um, you can look at then their business entities. Same thing, is this tax advantage? Um, when you go to sell, when is your, sell your selling horizon? What are the different types of entities that could provide better income opportunities, right? Um, and you can include retirement tax planning all in one. So this is a wide service for a specific area of tax planning. So this is great if you want to pivot to a newer market or test out a new offering. And the next one is deep. So focus only on one core outcome and include services to help the client accomplish that outcome. For example, a package that addresses all of the tasks found in starting a new business from entity selection uh, to accounting setup. So you're doing everything you ever could think about um, when you're starting a new business and that is what your package includes. That is what you're marketing. And then from there, there's a handoff then to other services. So offering a deep package makes sense when you have proven expertise and results and are confident about charging your worth. These can be more lucrative packages. These are also good if you go into different niches or verticals um, where you can really be offering a deep um, type of platform or package as well. Uh, I definitely recommend looking at that and experimenting. So don't make your programs overly complex, make it easy to say yes. You know, think about Apple, maybe one of the best marketing and brands in the world. Everything is super simple. Accountants like to over, you know, overly complex, make things overly complex. Um, we usually try to advise them to make things simpler, um, clean it up for the the uh, the human that's looking at it, your prospect, uh, because again, their viewpoint, they want to, is, is this person talking to my pain point? Yes. Do they say they can solve it? B, yes. Had Do they have experience and done it for other clients through reviews and case studies? Yes. You've just nailed the three things to make them now decide to, to, to hire you, right? So clarity and transparency uh, resonate. You can always start talking about a package and customize each client. So you can start as a more simplistic client. We get it. Not every client will fit a specific package, but guess what? It's a starting point. You can fine tune it from there to get exactly what they need. Uh, so yes, not every client is the same. So customize where needed. Just a real quick example of a nice um, package, pricing package. You know, here's our bookkeeping, our tax, our CFO services. It's always nice to have one in the middle that we try to get most clients to go to. Um, but there's a lot of different ways to do this. And we have actually, in our payments tool, um, where it says get started, it will actually take them straight to the proposal um, where they can read a proposal, what's in it. They can then look at um, how many units they want to buy or what, you know, if they want to add three or four packages together, um, they can then sign an engagement letter and give you payment directly from your website. So think about that, cutting down the amount of time you're chasing new deals. And if your website was delivering clients that are ready to go. So how do you sell yourself effectively? You're now ready to get out there and sell. 
put yourself in your client's shoes, consider their pain points. I know I'm being redundant with certain things, um, but uh, so many of our clients do not do that. And we work, especially our VIP clients with Rebecca. She's very good at analyzing um, you know, where you're going, what the target audience is, and helping communicate in copy um, what those pain points are. We have a lot of clients that are taking advantage of our landing pages and doing some niche offerings. They're following our package uh, pricing and advice. And they're able to tell a story, but it starts with their client's pain point. Then the narrative um, kind of tells the how I'm going to solve that, right? Plan and practice your pitches. Get it down. Uh, you know, if you have not watched our uh, free discovery call webinar VIP workshop we did many months ago, I would suggest uh, looking at that again. Um, there's a lot of good points on how you can control the conversation. If their client has been pre-sold, it will take much less time to get on that discovery call to get them to buy. So stay calm. Do not brag. Hold your ground when people try to um, negotiate with you. Be prepared to walk away. I would say if you go to buy a car, I mean, now you're buying cars online, but if you're going to the traditional car dealership, um, unless you're willing to walk away you know, from the dealership, you have no leverage, right? They they have the one exact model, of course, for me every time. I, the last car I bought it, I want a specific AMG Mercedes. I There was only two of them in Southern California. I was dead. <laughs> you know, so there, there's not much um, leverage I had, but I got the leverage because on my trade-in, I actually got leverage um, purely because I stood up and started walking out the dealership and they wanted to sell that car today to a buyer and it worked. So, you know, same kind of mindset here. Remember that charging for expertise allows you to attribute more value to your services, even if you do not take as long. So I'm an expert. It took me years, 10, 20, 30, 40 years to, to be completely gifted at this. I can answer questions in five minutes. Some rookie could spend 10 hours and still not know the answer. I should be compensated for that. So once you have proven your value to your clients through pre-selling, through delivering financial results, right, you can easily upsell them to new packages. So example, if you established your value, so this is a, a current QuickBooks client, right? So they hired you just to set up QuickBooks. And that was a one-time fee and you set up all their controls in their books, their general ledger. And then that was the engagement. If you have done it a great job and you've built the trust, it would be much easier now to have a higher monthly fee to upgrade them into a monthly virtual accounting package, or more, even more importantly, get them into a virtual CFO package. Guess what? The monthly accounting package does not have as much perceived value as the virtual CFO package. Some people are putting the same services in that. They're not getting that. That's how you now differentiate the two. That's how you use packaging to get people to higher, higher price points, okay? So if this client perceives the value and unique expertise, they'll be happy to pay more for your continued services, especially if you did a great job in setting up their QuickBooks, right? So this allows you to shift into more consultative role where you can give less of your time yet provide more value, you know, really coaching them on how to be more successful, how to plan for the future, how to plan for growth, teaching them how to um, look at KPIs in their business to really teach them, where does the health of my business? What do I need to shore up? You know, am I having too much churn? What is the net uh, lifetime value of clients? When a client starts with me at $1,000, where are they two years from now? Are they at $800? Or are they at fifteen hundred dollars? Those are kind of things that show the health of a business. That's where you're show, you're really helping with your expertise. So as a recap, recap: not all time is created equally. Make the most of your time and charge for your expertise instead of the time and costs you spend doing the client work. Uh, being aware of the value in the work you do and the solutions that you're able to bring to your clients will enable you to maximize your time. And more importantly, your profits. And I speak to all those that have had, you know, several tough years, um, you know, between all the PPP loans, the economy, inflation, businesses struggling, you guys are working harder than ever. Um, tax, you know, tax code is more complex than ever. Um, the reality is, I think you guys should be compensated for it. And more importantly, I think you should get your health and your life back. And if you start looking at some of the concepts we're talking about here, I guarantee you, you can work with fewer clients and make more money than you do today. So remember to be patient with any big transition. And this is a risky one to many of you. That's why you can iterate and test. You can just try it on the side to learn. These are experiments um, and, and learn from it. You know, do it so you can have an A, B and say, okay, this one worked, this one didn't. You know, have a couple of clients run through it. What is their gripes? What is their feedback? And then optimize it from there. But doing nothing keeps you in the status quo. 
Um, and ultimately is a tough business model to maintain. And the reality is most of the high fly and high growth firms have pivoted to the new business models. They are not working the way accountants did in the past. And those that are, continue to will be seeing more and more price pressure. Uh, they're going to see price pressure from technology automation. And you know they're going to see price pressure from Intuit and others. So now is the time to take on some of this risk and start um, making these decisions. I want to thank all of you. Again, our team, our VIP team, if you have not spoken to Rebecca, um, she is incredible. Patrick as well is helping out with a lot of the VIP uh, members. Um, both have really good knowledge. So if your issue is more, hey, you know, I'm thinking about changing pricing, want to talk it over. If your issue is narrative and branding, if your issue is, hey, I wanted a redesign of my site. If you're looking for SEO changes, you know, let's do a, a quick audit and let's see what's working, what's not. And what it's really easy to tell. You know, there's certain uh, customers ours that are ranking like crazy. I was looking at a report yesterday of a client. They had 80 number one Google results. They had 80 position two through five Google results. And I think it was like 40, uh, six through 10. Um, so they had 200 page one Google results of different sets of keywords. That's incredible. So if you're not getting the kind of traffic you want, there's definitely things that we can look at. You know, Maybe you don't have enough reviews. Maybe your social media profiles aren't set up. Maybe you're too much of a generalist. You're not niching down enough. You're not communicating to the pain points of your clients. There's a lot of things we can adjust on your site. We'd love to hear from you. Reach out at help at countingworkspro.com. You can always call our 800 number. Um, and if you do want to look at our 3.0 package, visit countingworkspro.com, go to the pricing page. You can set up a demo with Steve or Patrick and then kind of walk you things through things. Again, thank you for being a customer at a VIP side. Um, we hope that, oh, oh, I want to back up. We're going to experiment a little bit with shorter versions of these to see if more of you will spend the entire time. Um, we know these are valuable and sometimes not, someone doesn't have 50 minutes of their day to sit down and you know listen about marketing. So we are going to do some experiments iterating ourselves. Give us some feedback as we go through these. We appreciate it. Thank you again for being a customer.